Good morning, welcome. We are a little bit uh, later than we expected to be this morning, but uh, glad to see you here. Good morning, Chair and Committee members. Happy to be here. Rob Ogles will be representing the California Energy Commission. If you like, I'll just jump to issue 10. Please do. So this isn't the biggest uh, issue we have before you today, but it's clearly among the most interesting. This is a uh, uh, 15 million general fund uh, proposal to, to fund transportation, advanced transportation fuel research. And the reason it's before you today is because we don't have funding sources that match the kind of research that this proposes. Transportation continues to be one of the areas where uh, we have the highest uh, sources of emissions of greenhouse gas pollutants. And um, I, I, I acknowledge that the recommendation here is to hold it open. Um, but with mind that with uh, keeping in mind that transportation is one of the larger sectors of greenhouse gas emissions and that we're going to have a lot of uh, vehicles that need drop in fuels we're proposing the use of the funds uh, for this category thank you does uh, lao or dof have comments? i think just just to highlight again this is a general fund, proposed general fund expenditure and you'll want to weigh this against your your other priorities thank you any public comment Issue number 11, please. Issue number 11 is uh, inspired by the very serious uh, circumstances we have the, that um, were brought as a result of the failure of the Aliso Canyon uh, gas storage facility. And it revealed the weaknesses in our existing analytical and, and uh, uh, modeling uh, capabilities at the Energy Commission. We have partnered with other agencies. We've used uh, consultants. We've partnered with private sector companies to do the kind of modeling we need to understand the impacts of the loss of the, um, this gas storage facility on reliability, uh, focusing most immediately on this summer, we're looking at possibly 14 days of curtailment uh, that could impact uh, electricity in the uh, Southern California region. We've developed mitigation plans that are intended to address that, but uh, it's clear that the understanding of the interrelationship between the natural gas system and our uh, electricity energy um, uh, gas-fired energy generation fleet needs uh, a great deal of study, and going forward, it's going to be operated differently, both as a result of this particular uh, facility, but also looking forward as we uh, integrate greater uh, numbers of renewables, which require different characteristics about how we operate our gas system. So I'd be happy to talk about both the, uh, the uh, circumstance that, that has caused our immediate and urgent need, as well as long-term needs, if you'd like to go into that in more detail. I don't think that's necessary for my part. Uh, LAO or DOF, any comments? No. no? Oh, my apologies. Mr. Patterson. All right. Obviously, this curtail it, it dovetails with the concerns raised in UNC. And, and uh, you see 14 days of curtailment. Let me describe the... What does that mean? With this, th it means a significant risk of having some power outages in the Los Angeles basin. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood what... The effect of a 14, potentially 14 days of curtailment. Potentially. Uh, do you have a sense of whether it could be 22 days or whether it might be six? I, 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 I'm trying it to, could be. I'm but trying but to let me describe, let your, me describe your confidence in, in the 14 days. It's not. It's, it's a risk assessment. And what we've done is, is uh, done some very complex hydrologic modeling based on uh, some climate and circumstances in the past and looked at the ability of the gas system to provide the gas that you need to provide the electricity uh, in response to changing circumstances. So the biggest risk is a mismatch. Uh, getting, uh, because you have to dispatch the gas, which travels at 30 miles uh, an hour or slower, uh, well in advance 
of the need to consume it since we don't have a storage facility. Um, we have to get those projections right. And uh, there are other things we can do to mitigate it, like, mitigate it like flex alerts and so forth. But having circumstances where maybe the, the fog in the Los Angeles basis burns off at 10 instead of 2, that can create a problem, having no fog when you think there's going to be fog. So the answer to your question is that there's no certainty that it's going to be precisely 14 days. However, based on analyzing the capabilities of the system and some historical uh, uh, that aren't particularly unusual, some historical events, climate events, and so forth, and assuming that all the generation facilities are operating perfectly and assuming that there were no outages in the pipelines and assuming ELISA was not available, and there is some gas in there, too, that can help blunt some, some uh, uh, crisis circumstances. We'll have to talk about that uh, if you wish. But there's a limited amount of some gas that can be moved around. But having said that, the exercise that we went through was to really uh, see how much risk there was going to be. And as a result, the system's going to have to be operated like it's never been operated before with that near-perfect balance between dispatching gas in advance so it can be delivered at the time it's needed, because if there's too much, there's no place to put it, and if there's too little, you have to have some curtailments. Um, just a very quick follow-up. Any likelihood that uh, uh, port operations would be disrupted? Yes. That That's a significant concern for the whole state, but Central California as well, because of our... So there's core customers, non-core customers. Core customers are residential. Non-core are... Uh, the, the refineries, the electricity generation, and some of the industrial. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Eli Garcia for the Western States Petroleum Association. Thank you. Uh, to that very point, Mr. Patterson and uh, Mr. Ogles, we just mentioned it. Refineries, our Southern California refiners are growing, growing increasingly concerned about this summer and this winter in the uh, the role that the Aliso Canyon uh, field and how it's operated and how the Energy Commission uh, can uh, can evaluate the, the reliability of the system is a growing concern for our refiners. We are those non-core customers that use a tremendous amount of natural gas and electricity to make the state's transportation fuels. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, they operate to supply the, the state's transportation fuels. We're concerned. Uh, we understand that it's an incredible challenge that the Energy Commission and the administration has ahead of it, uh, but we hope that we maintain all flexibility that we can in how we operate that field going forward because there is a tremendous amount at risk. Uh, during the electricity crisis, we faced this very same issue. When, uh, when refineries were placed into the uh, curtailment program, it didn't take long for policymakers here in your position then to realize that an electricity crisis quickly turned into a transportation fuels crisis, which turned into an economic crisis. So uh, we're growing concerned. We're going we're to be talking to the administration very quickly here about how to provide assurances with enough lead time, to Mr. Ogilvie's point. We, we absolutely get that. You need to have lead time here to be able to rely on those forecasts and do something about them to avoid next level uh, disruptions and next level crisis. So, uh, we encourage you your continued attention to this issue. Uh, you have legislation in front of you sometime in the next week or so about uh, what we do with that field, but we need to make sure we maintain flexibility and we make sure that we make give the agencies the resources that they need to stay on top of it and, and to be as flexible as we can in how we operate that and avoid uh, other crises. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll move on now to issue number 12. Our final issue of the day. Thank you, Chair. Uh, issue number 12 is a number of, of uh, proposals of various sizes and significance. I'll just touch on them lightly. Can I to pause for just one second? I can ask uh, uh, the sergeant to start calling members because we're going to begin voting uh, as soon as we're done with this item. My apologies. So I'll touch on them lightly. Be, be happy to expand on any that you want me to go into more detail. I think SB 350 is probably pretty fresh on your, your memories since it was passed just recently. And that's our largest BCP. That BCP um, placed substantial duties on the Energy Commission uh, and, and by far is, is the largest BCP before you now. Keep, uh, as a refresher, we had the significant duty enhancements that related to energy efficiency from existing uh, uh, buildings, 
Uh, we have assignments to work with uh, contractors, uh, high quality performance standards, and to do consumer protection as well. Energy efficiency uh, in existing buildings, data tools and planning activities, uh, compliance, and energy efficiency standards to, uh, to improve enforcement related to uh, appliance standards, uh, setting statewide energy efficiency targets uh, and assessing the effects of, of energy efficiency activities, developing guidelines for re reviewing integrated resource plans, which is a huge effort that uh, the publicly owned utilities, the 16 largest, will be submitting to the Energy Commission to evaluate integrated uh, resource plans. Um, analyzing uh, more fine grain analytical work on analyzing, verifying, maintaining any annual, annually generation data. Um, studies on barriers to solar PV and other renewables and small business contracting opportunities yeah, and so on. So there's um, a good piece of, three, of SB 350 related to, to uh, follow-up activities and assignments to the Energy Commission and this asks for support for those activities. EPIC program increase, the next one basically is a, a inflation adjustment provided by the Public Utilities Commission and combining with some funds that were unspent uh, either because the projects uh, completed under budget or there was some fallout, that's $4.5 million on that. Um, the uh, AB 802 uh, implementation, that's the benchmarking uh, for efficiency uh, in, in buildings as well. The position conversions basically um, make permanent positions that were limited term positions. Uh, some of those, again, augment our energy analytical uh, capacity. Uh, one is the International Relations Advisor, which focuses primarily on, on the great deal of business we're doing with Mexico. Um, and then one uh, is for uh, acceptance testing, which is non-residential. Uh, building uh, standards, energy efficiency standards. When they, when the industry tells you the efficiency standards are incredibly complex and require a lot to do, it's true. This helps facilitate that. Helps get get building built by having them uh, uh, certified so that they can do the the uh, installations, lighting, and those sorts sorts of things. Uh, the federal funds uh, for energy efficiency relate to. Uh, Repurposing ARA funds that have been repaid and uh, would support uh, state buildings as well as a uh, uh, program for local governments. Ramp down to the public interest charge and reappropriation of unspent uh, peer funding is basically the, the, uh, uh, the final ramp down of a program that's been sunsetted. And then finally, uh, under AB 454, uh, we've had an opportunity to police the marketplace for appliances. We've discovered a um, kind of alarming amount of, of non-compliance uh, in appliances that are supposed to be energy efficient and supposed to be saving consumers money. Uh, we'd like to um, uh, continue our work in that area. Um, and I think it's fertile field. I think we have an opportunity to save energy and all the related impacts of additional energy. And um, it's not surprising that when you have a marketplace that hasn't been subject to oversight, that, that the playing field is not always level. Well, that should be interesting um, to learn more about that as we move forward. So we have a uh, staff recommendation to approve uh, this uh, uh, budget item and uh, the, the spring fiscal letter. Uh, LAO, any issues? Great. Department so moved. That's is good. Oh. Well, I think what we ought to do is kind of go back to the beginning and move our way through uh, all the items that need to be voted on. But first, let me just make sure that there's no members of the public who'd like to be heard. And now we're uh, ready to proceed with voting. We're going back to, I think we're going to start with issue number four. Uh, I would, uh, on issue uh, number four under the Air Resources Board, um, uh, move to adopt uh, the uh, staff recommendation, which is to reject the proposal. Is there a second? second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Ready to vote. Just give Mr. Williams a moment to catch up. She just sat down. This is a vote only? No, it's on the list to be heard. Issue number four. This one. All right, let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. Issue number five. On issue number five, I would move the, the um, staff recommendation, uh, which converts 162000 in funding um, uh, and approves the remainder of the proposal uh, as um, envisioned. Second. We uh, have a motion and a second on issue number five. Ready? Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Patterson, no. Williams? Aye. Williams, aye. Three to one. Issue number six was information only. Issue seven? On issue number seven, I would uh, move to um, approve as budgeted. Second. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Patterson, no. Williams? Aye. Williams, aye. It's three to one. That's out. Issue eight? Issue eight, uh, uh, VW, um, would uh, move to approve as budgeted. Thank you. Okay. Let's proceed with a vote. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. Five to zero. Issue number nine. Issue number nine, the enhanced fleet modernization uh, moved to approve as budgeted. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Let's proceed with a roll call. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. It's three to two. Out. Issue number 10, we're holding open. Issue 11. Issue 11, uh, relating to Aliso Canyon, uh, would uh, move to adopt the spring fiscal letter. Second. We have a motion and a second. Second from Patterson. Proceed to vote, please. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. And finally, issue number 12. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to ask if we can split. Um, would you like to suggest a motion to I begin would, with? I'd like to move that we take up the following uh, items uh, in 12 first, uh, which would be EPIC AB802, uh, disaggregated energy appropriation of the energy efficiency funds and the ramp down of the public interest charge. And, and I, would, I would move... Uh, Approval. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Let's vote on that one. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. Thank you. Are there any additional motions yeah. on item issue 12? Yeah, on, on issue number 12, uh, I would move the balance uh, of the items. It includes the SB 350 implementation, um, the issues related to the implementation of AB uh, 865. Uh, the position for an international relations advisor um, and the position associated with the acceptance test. Um, and then finally, um, to adopt uh, the April 1st fiscal letter regarding the implementation of SB 454. Second. And Mr. Gordon, just uh, clarifying on the implementation of recent legislation, you mentioned AB 865, so but I note that I uh, the... A uh, description also includes AB 802. Does your motion include? Uh, the previous oh, the previous motion did that. Okay, thank you. Glad right. somebody was right. listening. Good. <laughs> All right, we can vote on that now. Bloom? Aye. Obernolte? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. Yes, let's uh, take care of the add-ons now. Okay. 
for Mr. Obernolte. Uh, do I have any? Thank you. Uh, I I don't think thank you. I voted here. Right. And I started. Yeah. Hmm?